but long casts on pressured lakes are essential. I cannot stress that enough. To get that big bite, you need to learn how to make long casts. And bait casters are the way to do it. Uh, you just gotta learn how to tune them in. What's up guys? Welcome back to Flipping the Script Fishing. I'm out here at the lake and I thought what a better time to show you how to cast a bait caster. Now, I've gotten a lot of requests on uh, the specifics on how to cast a bait caster. What better way to show you than with my brand new rod and reel combo. Um, this is the Wraith and this is the Creature Rod. This reel is supposed to be a really good reel, uh, 10 ball bearings, um, ceramic uh, bearings, and uh, 7 to 1 gear ratio, but it's supposed to be able to cast really well. So. I'm going to show you how I tuned it in and to get those long casts. First thing you need to take notice is and, and understand is what these components do. Okay, this is your fine tuning knob and this is your magnetic brake. Okay. Now, what you have to remember is that your fine tuning knob is to adjust to the weight of your lure. Okay, so adjust it so when that lure hits that water, when you just hit the button and you let it drop and it hits the ground or the water, that that uh, uh, spool will stop spinning. Okay, of course you can tune that in to, uh, once you get better at it, you can loosen that up, but I suggest to, to tighten it down uh, to begin with. That's adjusted properly. Now, that one that started, the line started to come loose. And I, I got my thumb on there and just slowed it down a little bit. Now, if that's the case, when I'm throwing it and it starts to come loose, tighten it up a little bit. came loose I'm gonna tighten it up a little bit. Alright, well that's probably too tight. I like it looser than that to get that long cast. But uh you saw that the bait drop slowly. Oh here it didn't even drop there you go. But that spool stopped right away. Okay. <laughs> Not a bad cast fine tuning knob you want it tighter with the heavier lures okay the heavier the lure the tighter it should be um, with the magnetic brake it's just the opposite the heavier the lure the less magnetic brake you need your thumb is the biggest brake okay so if your lure is not moving your thumb needs to be on there so your spool's not moving if your lure's not moving your spool's not moving so whether it's in the middle of a bad cast and, and uh, you know, your lure stops moving, you your thumb should be on there. Um, if uh, you know at the end of a cast, right as it hits the water, your, your thumb should be on there to stop that spool from spinning. Otherwise, it will continue to spin and that line will continue to peel off of there and that's when you're gonna get that bird's nest. Once you get good with it, you can loosen that up, but you still need to get the coordination with your thumb and uh, your spool so that you know when to put pressure on your spool and when not to. Anytime you're in like mid cast and the, and the line starts to get loose on that spool, that, that means the spool's spinning too fast and you need to slow it down. Just put a little pressure with your thumb. Um, you, you know, you're, you're welcome to just stop it so you don't get any kind of backlash. But if you just ease your thumb on it, that will also help. Uh, and that should help you from getting any worse backlash. The magnetic brake, okay? <clears throat> That's on this side of your reel, okay? It's usually a knob like this, or sometimes you, you can take this part off and there's a, a little, uh, it's like a dial and you can pull the uh, 
uh, pieces on. Yeah, when, when those pieces are out further, it acts as a brake. When they're in tight, that spool will just continue to spin. Think of a uh, of an ice skater. When, they, when they're doing their spins and they pull their limbs in, they spin real fast. But when they allow their limbs to come out, the, that slows their spin. So the magnetic brake does you know, roughly the same thing with those little pieces that come out. Uh, this one, you know, it's it's got a little pressure piece uh, or magnets on there. So, uh, you know, the, the closer the magnets are to the spool, the more it will slow that uh, spool down. So when I loosen it, those magnets are being pulled away from that spool and thus not slowing it down. velocity is how easy, easily the wind slows something down or that just the uh, when it's passing through the air how much that resistance will slow it down a heavier lure has a greater terminal velocity whereas a lighter lure has a lower terminal velocity so a lighter lure is slowed down by air much more than a than a heavier lure so that's even magnified more so when you have wind so when i have lots of wind i need to tighten that magnetic brake uh, especially if i have a light lure with a heavy lure you can zing that out there and, and you know it, it's it's usually good unless it contacts something there's not much stop in that so that's why you can have a the magnet uh, lessened and just allow your your bait to sail One way you can tell which one of the knobs that you need to adjust is when I go to cast, does that spool, does the line start to come off that spool immediately? If it does, you need to adjust the fine tuning knob, okay, tighten it down. If that line in the middle of the cast and on towards the end of the cast starts to come off that spool, then you need to adjust and tighten uh, or possibly even loosen your uh, magnetic brake okay most of the time you need to tighten it a little bit okay but that one you can go either way um, but most of the time you're gonna need to tighten it uh, so remember if the line comes off in the beginning of the cast right off the bat adjust your fine-tuning knob at near the middle or the end of the cast adjust your your uh, magnetic brake Okay. Now, let me uh, show you how I actually have my rod and reel oriented when I make my cast. Okay, so when I see people make casts, I often see them, they're casting like, if you can see this, they're casting like this, where their rod and the reel are upright when they're making like an overhand cast. When you're doing that, when you're doing that, it causes more drag on your line uh, and on that spool. So, you know, you can still cast that way. And I've seen a lot of people get good at that, but because they, they compensate for it. But I think it's important to have the least amount of obstacles as possible. So when you cast, um, and I'm just going to demonstrate with the overhand and this applies when you do side arm or, or a roll cast or anything like that. When that line comes off that rod and reel, you ought to have it turned. So if I make an overhand cast, I should be casting like this, okay? And it, it causes less drag and less contact and it, it provides for a better cast. Plus it's, it's a lot easier on your, on your wrist, okay? So if I'm throwing it like this, I need to have my hand uh, turn on the side like that. Okay, if I'm making a, a, a sidearm cast, it should be up like this. My line's coming off the, the side that way, okay? So, so do not, it's, a, it's much easier to have it oriented correctly. And I'll show you that right now. No problem. As soon as that lure hits the water, put my thumb on the on the on the uh, spool to stop it. Okay, and that casts a bunch. And if 
you notice that the line, uh, I like to keep mine pretty loose. I've been casting, uh, bait casting for quite some time, so I've gotten pretty good at it. So um, my, my thumb is pretty coordinated with my spool. And as soon as I start feeling it get a little loose, you just kind of ease on it and slow it down a little bit, but you don't have to stop your cast. All right, some, something to remember is if I have my spool, my fine tune knob tightened down, I'm a lot less likely to get a backlash. If I have that really loose, then both components can go wrong. So if I have my, if it's, it's best to err on the side of caution, tighten it down a little bit uh, with your fine tuning knob and, uh, and then adjust. But if you have your fine tune knob really loose and you go to cast, it's gonna come apart. So especially I mean, if, if you're not used to it. So uh, something to remember and the err on the side of caution tighten down your fine tuning knob then loosen that up uh, your brake is like I said to the, towards the end of the cast All right. so now I'm going to loosen my fine tuning knob and uh, hopefully I don't mess things up too bad alright as you can see, my lower drops. See how that keeps coming off? All right, I'll show you again. All I'm doing is releasing the button. And since I have my fine tune knob all the way loose, you'll see how, what happens. And I'm not gonna let it happen too much, but we'll, you'll, I'll show you. <laughs> see how it comes off there? I, you know I have it I don't have it I need it I don't have it adjusted properly I need to tighten it down so best thing to do and of course you saw me stop it real quick with my thumb to minimize the damage but what I usually do when I get a backlash like that is I pull off stop the spool with my thumb pull off stop the spool with my thumb okay sometimes you'll have one loop that's making contact that just stays on there and the best way to do that is tighten your drag down Put your thumb on your spool and reel and what it does is it pushes that loop to the to the front okay and then i can pull it off and it helps you see how that work helps you get rid of that quicker okay most backlashes is one loop that's hung up underneath another piece of line or something like that and it's causing everything uh to bind up See, I was able to make a cast there even though it was loose because I pretty much kept my thumb on that spool. Uh, just loosened it up and eased on, loosened up, you know. So you can use your thumb as a, as a brake to, to keep all that. But that comes with practice. Every rod is not created equally, okay? Uh, chances are, uh, the cheaper ones, you're gonna have a little bit harder time dialing it in. Um, and uh, it will be really touchy. You go one way or the other and it, it's gonna go, you know, come apart on you. You spend a little bit of money, it's gonna be easier to dial in. It's not gonna mess up on you so much. But, you know, I understand. I don't, I don't have a whole lot of money. I completely understand. But just know you're gonna have to deal with more headaches the cheaper the, the reel, typically. Be patient, you got a cheap cheap reel, you're gonna have to be more patient. You have to dial it in a little bit, uh, take a little bit more time to dial it in. But, 
long casts on pressured lakes are essential. I cannot stress that enough. To get that big bite, you need to learn how to make long casts. And bait casters are the way to do it. Uh, you just gotta learn how to tune them in. Remember, if that line starts coming off early, fine, adjust your fine tune. If it starts coming off later on in the cast, adjust your break, okay? You need to tighten it. Um, so, principles, those, those two are so key. All right, guys, well, I hope those tips helped. Um, that's how I tune my bait caster in. So hopefully they work for you as well. Um, if you have any questions or comments, or uh, if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer them for you. Uh, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and uh, hit the notification bell and you'll get notifications of all these uh, different videos that I put out. Um, and of course, if there's something you guys wanna see, let me know, uh, put that in the comments as well. because. Uh, I'm always up for trying new things or explaining uh, something that people are having a difficult time with. So, hope you enjoy it, guys. Till next time, tight lines. Twenty and a half inches long, fourteen and a half inches girth. Nice fat one.